communication, early learning, and um, about the Community Navigator program. If you have any questions as we go through this presentation, please use the raise your hand function that will let us know that you have a question. You can also type your question into the chat box and we'll be sure to stop within the presentation to answer that question. We're hoping at the end of the presentation to have some time dedicated for some conversation about larger topics that we want to dis that you want to discuss. So if you have any of those larger topics, you can save those to the end and we'll have some some time for for conversation. We are recording today's presentation and we'll share a link with you later in the week and let, in case there's something that you want to share on with other networks, people you're working with, uh, your board of directors, etc. And before I get started, I'd like to introduce the CDFA team. For today's briefing, I'm joined by Kevin Peterson, Molly Donovan, Melissa Latham, and Nate Olson. I want to take just a minute to recognize that Kevin Peterson is going to be retiring at the end of this week. He will still be advising CDFA on this project, which he's had such an important role on and other work, but he will be officially retiring from CDFA. So just wanted to take a moment uh, to really thank him for his leadership, uh, particularly as he applied for this grant, which was, as you know, a building the plane as it flew type of project, but he did a great job really pulling all those pieces together. And we're so thankful for the things that we're able to talk about that we've learned through this work uh, as a result of his leadership. We're also joined by our partners from the Northwest Spoke who will be presenting on some of their highlights um, of their work on the Community Navigator Program. So we'll look forward to being introduced to them later in the presentation and hearing what specifically they're working on as well. I would, uh, as we move into the presentation, we'd love to just understand who's joining us uh, from your organization today. So if you wouldn't mind, just put in the chat uh, your name and organization affiliation so we can all say hello to each other. A couple of brief goals. Uh, we're looking to really build um, all, all of our awareness and knowledge about what's happening on the Community Navigator Program and how we may all learn from each other and take these learnings back to our work sharing a high uh, level overview of recent milestones and again, those learnings, and then give you a overview of what we plan to do in the remaining five months of this program and how we hope to sustain the work of this program after the Navigator program. Just as a reminder, CDFA was awarded a two year, $2.5 million grant. And this is a grant from the US Small Business Administration. This started in November, 2021. And it was to launch the Community Navigator Program in New Hampshire. CDFA serves as the statewide hub for implementation. We're working alongside our established microenterprise technical assistance providers, New Hampshire's SBA office, statewide training and language access partners, and on-the-ground community partners to achieve the goals of this program. Our collective efforts focus on reaching small businesses that are owned or being started by historically vulnerable and underserved community members. Our hub and, this is a hub and spoke part, uh, project and network. And as I said, CDFA being in that, that hub role, we provide coordination, support, training, guidance, and direct liaison, liaison uh, activities with the SBA. And then the spokes are on the ground, reaching and supporting new underserved business owners. Through the Community Navigators Program, we're seeking to build the capacity of our providers, the spokes, and community partners so that new opportunities are created for underserved business clients to access technical assistance and capital. And we will present some of the numbers of who's been reached through this program later in the presentation, and I think you'll really see that that's, that's been successful in happening. These partners also participate in the CDFA-funded Micro Enterprise Program, and this provides support to the very smallest and most challenged business owners. As you may remember, the Micro Enterprise Program does provide support for businesses that are owned by five and less employees, which has obviously an overlap with the, with the real targets of this program, but as you can see, is also slightly, um, slightly different focus. So really a lot of great learnings uh, between these two areas of work that CDFA has the, the pleasure of partnering with, with the partners who are listed here on the slide. And I'd love to start off uh, this explanation of what we're learning. 
Um, so technical assistance is ever changing. Uh, we know that our partners, the spokes, are responding to the needs of, the, of business owners and potential business owners in their community by learning from those businesses and networks of those businesses. And in the, in the Community Navigator program from community partners, which are often nonprofits, for what the technical assistance needs are of business owners in their community. And what this program did, as you know, is really uh, ensure that we're connecting with community partners who may not always be sitting at the table, being a part of our ecosystem in the past, um, and really bringing them to the table to help un us to understand what those needs are. And our spokes are really responding to that, changing the way that they're providing technical assistance, trying out new ways of providing technical assistance, getting feedback from those business owners, because this is really an iterative, flexible uh, implementation program. We've heard over and over uh, how important it is to have representation, representation in who sits at the table, uh, what kind of imagery shows uh, the businesses that we're supporting. And we've heard um, a number of times now, both from individuals as well as from our spokes, that that, that really has, has been true in this program. So when people can see themselves in that um, home-based child provider who walked in the door of one of the spokes and was able to solve a challenge they have, they're more likely uh, to really see themselves as walking through that door and, and really talking about the challenges they're having as a business owner and getting the support they need. So I think in all matters, representation really ensures that we are reaching those business owners who have been most left out of receiving technical assistance and access to capital. We're also understanding some of the specific um, needs that our underrepresented business owners have at being able to be successful and to grow. And sometimes those are really unique solutions. Uh, we've heard of an opportunity for the rent of a particular new business to be tied to, um, tied to the income that that business is bringing in, really lowering that barrier, which would have been about the risk of starting their business, which would have had significant uh, detriments to their to their family and their family's stable income. So when they're, when um, business owners have not been a part of the kind of ecosystem and being able to access opportunities kind of identifying those specific things that provide a gap in that system that allows access and really breaks down what will be a barrier for them to start a business is something we're starting to learn about. And we're really interested in taking these anecdotal things we're hearing and really raising them into learnings over the next number of months and, and throughout the next number of years as we do this work. Uh, so this is just a really early learning, but something we're very excited about. And at this point, I'd love to turn it over to my colleague, new colleague at CDFA, Molly Donovan, who has stepped into the role of Director of Economic Development and seamlessly taken uh, the leadership in this Community Navigator program and has been working a lot as she had in her previous role on outreach engagement and learning is gonna talk about some of the learning we're seeing uh, in those areas. Thank you, Katie. Um, I'm just listening to the thunder here. So um, also hoping we don't, we don't lose power. Um, and also wanna e echo a thank you to Kevin Peterson, who's been a wonderful colleague in terms of bringing me on board and teaching me um, the ins and outs of this program and really setting us up for success over these last two quarters. So thank you, Kevin. Um, just wanted to touch on, um, uh, continue on the discussion on some things that we're learning. And um, certainly um, what I think has been a, a, a constant theme is the need for robust outreach engagement and learning um, with the spokes. And so we're seeing really strong traditional outreach um, making um, potential clients aware of the services. I'd say more importantly, we're seeing um, tremendous work in terms of engagement and our spokes um, identifying um, new places to go to and participate in and to, be, to begin to build relationships um, with uh, new target audiences. Oh I think we're also um, yeah. seeing that um, while we're focused on our target populations, we're better understanding all the time the intersectionality of those target populations. Understanding that um, BIPOC could also include women, LGBTQ can also include um, a, a Black business owner and whatnot. And so while we're looking at those target populations individually, we're also understanding how um, they're connected and um, intersectional. 
We're also seeing that critical emerging topics um, are to be addressed, and they also include our topic, um, our target population. So, for example, we've got some folks working on child care because a critical issue in economic development, um, and often our child care, particularly family child care centers, are are run by um, uh, women and target populations. Um, and then also that these folks are in ongoing training um, of all sorts um, as staff members of their organization, but they're also bringing their board of directors through training. And so I think what we're seeing is some organizational strengthening and organizational change. And so the work we're doing doesn't just sit with individual staff members, but really changing the organizations that are part of the small business ecosystem. We have a greater understanding of community partners and their capacity. Uh, and so um, in our growing list of community partners, we've got some longtime organizations and we've got some new emerging organizations. And so as you can imagine, which is typical uh, in the development of organizations, there's varying capacity in terms of um, how they can participate with us as partners. Also, there's lots of efforts around the state looking to connect with some of our community partners. Um, and we're pleased that um, a couple of our community partners in the Navigator program are also looking to CDFA for some capacity building support to strengthen and grow their organization. So I think as, um, as you, uh, we see change across the state over the next year, uh, sorry, the lights went out, but we will continue here. Um, uh, what we're seeing is that um, we're going to understand the capacity of uh, these emerging uh, nonprofits and know that it started with the Navigator program. Key accomplishments um, that we'd like to share today. As I mentioned, we have a growing list of community partners and they're part of the fabric of the business community and are acting as trusted allies for both small businesses and the spokes. Partners include the Business Alliance for People of Color, Indonesian Community Connect, the COAS Child Care Directors Network, the Upper Valley Business Alliance BIPOC Network, and the Monadnock Diversity, Equity, Inclusion and Belonging Coalition. And just recently, we brought on the Center for Women and Enterprise as a community partner. Uh, a next accomplishment is our community of practice, which I would say is growing and thriving. Uh, this is our monthly gathering of the spokes and the hub staff, uh, where we're doing peer exchange, idea generation, and overall strengthening of our small business network and resources across the state. Um, we have engaged New Hampshire Listens, which is an initiative out of the uh, UNH Carsey School to help facilitate our community of practice. And the community of practice, I think, has spent the last year or so really doing a deep dive on diversity, equity, and inclusion training. And now we're putting that training into practice and working on some practical aspects of that. Um, and so we're currently looking at what does it mean to have inclusive loan policies at the regional development corporations? And alongside of that, um, uh, DEI statements and how to work through those as staff and as board um, and to um, uh, link those with inclusive loan policies. So stay tuned as we work through that. Um, the community of practice is also getting to know uh, the statewide partners and continuing that uh, relationship building through them we're having some training on access and inclusivity on our websites. Um, and we're gonna be targeting some uh, new populations to learn about most notably uh, veterans in our community. The community of practice is also participating in a CDFA equitable lending training. So that is not our CDFA here in New Hampshire. This is the, the uh, a national organization that provides training um, on finance. And so we're in session two of learning about the equitable loan practices um, and other topics that I think are really gonna inform um, some of the practices of our spokes. 
Um, on the outreach and engagement side, I mentioned that a little bit earlier. Um, and I would say that um, we're, we're really excited to see how the folks are um, doing their engagement and going to various initiatives and events in their communities. Um, many of them are reaching out town by town by town. Um, and so um, it'll be interesting to see when we close out the program, how many communities actually were touched by the Community Navigator Program. Um, I think this again is a shift um, from just doing outreach to doing serious community engagement. Um, and we also are continuing our work on inclusive uh, marketing and communications. And Melissa, I'm going to turn it over to you, try to get my lights back on and let you finish out this slide if I can do that. Absolutely. And um, as you can imagine, some of the work that Molly uh, has mentioned um, is overlapped uh, when we're talking about inclusive marketing uh, and communications. And um, when we started this program, uh, we we developed and deployed a statewide website for the Community Navigator Program, and we've since kind of evolved that effort um, into an ongoing blog series. It's really trying to raise topics that are relevant to the work um, happening within this program, some of those emerging learnings or best practices um, that we've been discussing and working towards, as well as uh, we're looking forward to really lifting up um, success stories as we uh, continue to move forward um, with this work and, and raising some of those uh, business voices uh, that have been served through the program. Um, so we've also been working to uh, create some statewide marketing materials and are providing support for some very specific marketing needs um, for our spokes. So that includes um, you know, increased support around outreach and marketing efforts based on um, their unique needs, which could be uh, specific to communities, populations, or business sectors that they're serving. Um, and as Molly mentioned, um, we've had some partners in this work um, who've been active in our community practice, as well as um, providing office hours um, to our spokes to, to assist them um, in our overarching efforts. And that partner has been Jaime Simone and his team at Lewis Carno and Company based in Concord. Um, so some of the activities um, that he's really been focused on diving into with all of us are uh, supporting translations of materials so that we can increase access uh, to the information that we're looking to share um, and increase access uh, to those businesses um, that are not native English speaker speakers. Um, so really taking a hard look at, um, at language access across the board in both materials um, and in our, our websites. Um, he's really been focused as well as providing guidance on developing DEI statements and how to communicate those commitments um, on our websites and in other ways that's really authentic and important um, for those communities that we're looking to serve. Um, and also just using that inclusive language and, um, and photos on materials, as Katie mentioned, representation really does matter. So how do we um, as organizations do that in a way that's really authentic and that is reaching and speaking to um, those that we want to um, that we want to better serve, that we want to serve, as well as providing um, some social media content help. So um, it's been really a great evolution of our understanding and efforts um, in that marketing and communication space. And, and we know that that'll continue on. Um, and another item um, that Molly also referenced um, that I'll dig in a little bit more on is that improved access to capital. So we know um, and Navigators is really recognizing um, that that is such a critical barrier that we're really working to break down um, through this program is how um, people can access capital. And we know that this is a systemic barrier, um, but we're really working to address this challenge um, within our organizations. And we're doing that in a number of ways. Um, as Molly mentioned, uh, that those practical trainings, that equitable lending training um, that we're participating in collectively and, and thinking through and really taking back to our organizations and, and starting to question and dig deeper into like what our policies and procedures are and how we can change those um, so that we can be more equitable. And I'll just share an example is one way that um, we've really dived into that as uh, we adopted um, in 2023, uh, a new interest rate policy. And that interest rate policy um, provides discounts basically um, that correspond with our strategic priorities to increase access to resources for underserved communities and populations. Um, so your interest rate can go down uh, based on some of the demographics um, you know, that you represent uh, so that we can better serve those who have not traditionally had access to capital. 
Um, and also we've added in new elements to our micro enterprise program um, that's been referenced uh, a couple of times. Um, a lot of our partners in our navigators work are also our micro enterprise partners. Um, so we are working to provide new program elements that really increases access to equity for low and moderate income small business owners um, through those technical assistance providers. Um, so we're we're seeing that uh, that starting to get adopted, and we're really excited um, to hopefully see that continue uh, continue to um, improve access to capital um, for those that we're looking to serve through navigators and beyond uh, this program. And with that, Molly, it looks like your lights are back on. I will pass it back to you. <laughs> so far, so good. Thank you. I, um, I'll let Melissa. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so I wanted to share with you today the spoke service area. I think many of you have seen this, um, and this really illustrates that we're having a presence and an impact across the state. Um, I just wanted to share with you, um, there's lots of great successes, and I know we've got some, um, I think we have all spokes represented here on the call today. So I'm just going to share with our audience um, one thing that um, each of you is where each of the spokes are working on, but feel free um, to add other things in the chat or um, our participants can certainly reach out to spokes um, in their region if they're interested in learning more. Uh, but just sharing that our Northeast spoke um, has been reviewing their program documents for ADA compliance. In fact, we have a number of spokes looking at um, ADA compliance and beyond and working um, with some expertise in making sure that the disabled community has access to the work that we're doing. Our Southeast spoke recently worked with an immigrant from Mongolia to support their micro green business called Wild Chives. Our Northwest spoke, which we're going to hear from in just a minute, um, is doing training with their staff and board and have adopted a DEI statement that um, they will be using on their materials. Um, our Southeast spoke um, is interested in reaching out to new clients, so they're contracting with NHPR to advertise on their new Spanish news show. And our statewide spoke, SBDC, um, is participating in a number of important um, initiatives across the state, including the New Hampshire Businesses for Social Responsibility, DEI, Workplace Innovation Challenge. Um, I saw them at the BAPOC annual meeting where they solidified um, their partnership with the Business Alliance of People of Color. Um, they're um, a technical assistance provider for a new initiative from the Manchester NAACP called the Community Driven Economic Empowerment Program. Um, they're participating in the Center for Business Analytics, DEI, Industry Networking, um, and a whole bunch of other things. Again, our spokes are involved in some of these activities as well. It's hard to pull out just one thing, but wanted to give you a flavor of what's happening across the state. Next, I'd like to introduce our Northwest spoke, um, who you will hear from. Um, we've got uh, Lise Housen. Uh, and Erica Canales from the Coas Economic Development Corporation, and Michelle Bowden from the Grafton Regional Development Corporation. I will let you all take it away and share your presentation. Thank you, Molly. Um, good afternoon. I'm Lise Housen with Coas Economic Development Corporation, and thank you for the opportunity um, for us to share some of our experiences with the SBA Community Navigator Program. Um, CDC and GRDC have spent a significant amount of time working to find and develop relationships with various leaders in the child care, child care field. Um, one such leader that we've identified is the Director's Network for Child Care Centers. The networks work with licensed child care centers in Coas County and in Grafton County. And they've identified that the centers need technical assistance, financing, grants, and various needs. Um, CEDC engaged with the Coas County Director Network as a community partner at the co-creator level. The Director Network works with 12 child care centers in Coas County, and we meet bi-weekly to design solutions for issues facing the um, child care industry. The network actively promotes CEDC to the centers and often bridges the gap between the centers and CDC. As 
most of you know, many of the centers are, um, are women owned. The owners are overextended. They do not have a lot of time to dedicate to initiatives outside the day-to-day -day, day -day operations of the centers. Working with a director network allows us to aid in the sustainability of these centers by providing support and assistance at a global level and as well as at an individual level. The director's network functions as a liaison um, between CDC and the centers. The network meets with the centers on a regular basis and assists the centers with prioritizing initiatives and in engaging with the right organizations to achieve their goals or to assist in achieving their goals. The, um, they've been a great partner of ours. The network has relayed the benefits of working with um, our organization. And we have been contacted by several centers to assist with TA, grant funding, and collaboration on larger projects. On the top priorities, one of their top priorities is the centers would like to install a software package that would streamline the billing capacity of the centers and improve efficiency. We have worked with various centers to assist them with acquiring and implementing the software. Our partnership with the director network has really allowed us to learn about a sector that has not had much engagement with business support services. We are supporting a sector that stimulates economic growth in multiple ways. We are confident that our partnership will continue and will be ongoing after the completion of the Community Navigator Program. And I'd like to pass it on to Erica to discuss other initiatives that we um, are working on with the director network. Thanks, Lise. Uh, as many of you know, our child care facilities have a shortage of workers to support the needed enrollment of children. Uh, and in light of this, um, we have expanded our work with the Co-op Directors Network to explore workforce development efforts in, with them. Uh, we had originally looked at the Department of Labor uh, workforce grant, realized that wasn't a really great fit. Um, and so we actually figured out a way that um, we've identified to create a planning grant for them to help the organization develop a youth workforce pipeline for uh, childcare. And the intent of, uh, is that with this funding, this program coordinator will actually work in conjunction with our approved planning grant with the state of New Hampshire's volunteer program uh, to basically pursue uh, an AmeriCorps VISTA uh, VISTAs in the future. And so this way they can take advantage of the efforts that we're putting in with our partners with uh, UNH Cooperative Extension and UNH uh, Outdoor Rec Department. Um, and that way they can benefit from, from the analysis of this to have the VISTA application ready to go in the following year. Um, additionally, um, CDC is playing a supporting role in identifying properties for expansion of a child care center in the Berlin Gorham area in conjunction with the lab school effort uh, development at White Mountain Community College. Uh, the only other thing that I'd like to mention on top of what Molly said with the equitable lending uh, efforts that we've been engaged in is the early process right now between GRDC, WEGCO, uh, while well, Mononac's not in this program, but the four of us are actually looking at um, coming up with some online so loan software that will actually have language translation so that we can make sure we, we reach those underserved populations and also to help against predatory lending. And I will pass it to Michelle at GRDC. Thanks, Erica. Um, hi, I'm Michelle Bowden, uh, Grants and Operations Manager at Grafton Regional uh, Development Corporation. And uh, we, we have a number of community partnerships as well. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to go into great detail on those because I'm going to speak a little bit more about some individual um, client work that we've done, but I definitely want to highlight um, those community partners um, and our other spoke partners with, with those partners. Um, so the Family Child Care Network, um, that's a new network of um, home-based or family-based um, child care uh, centers in the Upper Valley. Um, they work um, with the Early Care and Education Association. Um, and that is a partnership uh, between 
them, GRDC, and Hannah Grimes Center, the, the, the Southwest spoke. Um, so we've um, started a great relationship with with uh, with folks from those child care centers, and we we plan to continue cultivating that relationship. Um, in in the child care space, um, GRDC also has a new partnership with the Lower Grafton Council for Young Children and Families. Um, they also focus on home-based um, child care centers. So um, we're, we're planning um, hopefully a tour of, I think, five centers um, with uh, me and um, one of their um, outreach uh, folks to, um, you know, find out what they need and, and, and provide that support. Um, and then finally, the Upper Valley BIPOC Network. Um, which is also a partnership with the South in partnership with the Southwest spoke. Um, so uh, we've uh, done um, had had regular meetings. We've got a lot of plans. We've also had an event um, that had a great showing of um, BIPOC uh, business uh, owners um, as well that we're the, we're working to um, continue building relationships with. Um, so um, if you, yeah, if we could go to the next slide, I'll talk about um, some of our client success stories. So um, yeah, so this is um, Balvin Bowen from the Caribbean and um, in Lebanon. Um, I highly recommend <laughs> uh, stopping in if you're ever in town. Um, and uh, Balvin is, has been a Working, we've been working with him since the beginning of the Navigator program. Um, we've connected him to various resources, um, and he ha he has been in the process of opening a new location. Um, that uh, we the Navigator program has been able to support him in connecting him to various resources. Um, so he's received a loan um, to retrofit um, the new location. Um, he's received a grant to aid in purchase of a, a new refrigerator. Um, he's been the whole time he's been working with an SBDC advisor who, you know, partners with us on um, offering support um, and uh, helping us guide him through the process. Um, we've also um, been able to connect him with and um, assist in the work needed to um participate in a crowdfunding um, program that he did with Vital Communities. So just, you know, every single thing that we knew to um, offer, we were able to get him um, connected with. Um, and then separately, um, you can see also um, Catherine and Roly Lacoste, they've started the uh, RL Lacoste plumbing and heating business um, up in uh, the rural part of part of the county. Um, that's been just a great story to see from start to finish. Um, they, they're, they're a startup business. When they came to us, they didn't have their LLC. I was able to really encourage them to continue connecting with SBDC and do their homework. <laughs> um, and they then connect them with a startup loan, um, an equipment grant, um, and also, uh, work, working with a bookkeeper, um, to, uh, learn QuickBooks. Um, and it's, it's great. I live in the area that they are in business and I see on Facebook all the time, there are people recommending them. So, um, that's just a really, you know, kind of full circle thing that I I've gotten to see and, uh, be a part of. And that's, that's it from the Northwest spoke. Well, not really, but for this presentation. Awesome. Thank you all so much for uh, taking the time to share some of your successes and learnings and uh, the great work that you all are doing. And with that, I'm going to pass it um, to Nate from our team, who I know lost internet a moment ago. So hopefully he is still with us and ready to ready to roll. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, so we're going to zoom way, way out now and look at the very big picture. Um, I'm Nate Olson. I provide analytics capacity for the CNPP program, and that kind of ranges from reporting qualitative data to the SBA all the way through facilitating office hours for our partner organizations. Um, and at this point uh, in the program, our 
folks have reached more than 245 clients, which is really cool. Um, and they have provided 996 hours of client support. Um, one of the goals of this program was to reach underrepresented and underserved entrepreneurs. And so in that light, 58% of the clients uh, that we've worked with identify as non-white and 54% of the clients identify as female. Um, of the clients that we have reached, uh, more than 1 million in grants and loans have been approved, which is really exciting um, and a huge success for this program. Um, the CNPP is a pilot program, and as part of that, we piloted at the CDFA a new database this year to track outputs and outcomes of the program. And there are a lot of learnings that we had from that process and are still ongoing that I wanted to share with you all in this space. Um, so a few of those learnings, one is this new uh, platform allowed us to start to see um, and to start to explore together across organizations, this idea that clients are supported by multiple different organizations um, and different organizations have different capacities and skills. Um, and so by having a unified database, uh, we are moving towards a place where people um, different spokes can provide different services to clients and can see all in one place um, the services that have been provided across the board. So that's something that's really interesting about this program and we're sort of, or that we've learned through this program and that we'd like to continue sort of exploring in the future. Another piece uh, that has surfaced as that's really important in this program is the relationship aspect of all of the work that we do. Um, especially when we're collecting client data um, and demographic data, that is uh, very like sensitive information for people. And so we've been learning a lot about what are appropriate ways to be collecting that data and how do we collect that data um, in ways that are supportive of our relationships um, and what like is good timing, what are good processes and procedures in that space. And that is ongoing learning that we're having um, through this program. And we hope to kind of expand on in the future. Um, in terms of data collection and use, that's another piece that kind of ties into this relationship aspect of the program, um, making sure uh, that in future programs, we're doing really good job in playing close attention to uh, describing to clients exactly what data we are collecting about them and what that data is being used for, and describing the differences between uh, data that's required for um, our, our uh, the grant. So like SBA requires us to collect certain data, and what data are we collecting uh, for local purposes and understanding to improve the programmatic work that we're doing. Um, and yeah, last uh, but not least, this idea of, um, yeah, what I just talked about, this required data uh, reporting versus um, uh, data to inform practices. Yeah, so those are kind of our big learnings from this space. Um, and so, yeah, we're looking forward to continuing uh, to grow our data capacity and our data work uh, as we continue on in the future with CDFA programming. So I'll pass it on. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. I think that brings us back to Molly again. Thank you, Melissa. And thank you, Nate, for the work and the support that you bring to the spokes. It's been um, critical to the success that we're seeing. So thank you very much. So looking ahead, uh, we've got five months left in our program um, and we've got a big agenda. We've got a lot that we're going to accomplish. Um, and the first thing I want to share with you is that we're really happy to announce um, that we are embarking upon the New Hampshire Small Business Ecosystem Analysis, um, which will assess New Hampshire small business, technical assistance, and capital ecosystem to better understand the challenges of community members who are structurally disadvantaged by our current system. And so um, informally, what I would say is um, our spokes are living and learning this experience um, and as well as um, our underrepresented communities. And so we're trying to better understand what the entire ecosystem looks like across the state um, so that we can make um, shared recommendations and changes going forward. Um, as part of the ecosystem analysis, there's a very robust engagement effort 
Um, we have brought on a consultant who will be uh, doing one-on-one -on -one interviews, focus groups. There'll be a statewide survey coming out later this summer um, where we will be um, identifying what the challenges are and what the opportunities are um, in the small business ecosystem. So I, you will all hear more about this. Um, we expect this work to be wrapped up um, by the end of the year um, with recommendations and work to be done together um, to carry on um, the good effort that we've had here in the Community Navigator Program. So stay tuned on that. We have also um, are embarking upon this accessibility assessment. Uh, we've brought in um, an organization called Neighborhood Access, who will um, do an assessment for us on not only physical space in our organizations, but our program practices to ensure uh, that the disabled community has access um, to the programs that we provide. Um, we will be starting with an assessment of our own organization, CDFA, um, as well as uh, the Hannah Grimes Center, and then we um, fully expect some of our other spokes um, will be a part of that assessment, which includes um, not only an assessment, but some training and a full uh, long-term implementation plan, because we know some of the changes they will suggest um, are long-term, um, and so there'll be a plan in place for that. Um, we continue in our communications and marketing to build what we call our toolkit um, and that we have materials that are long lasting or evergreen beyond the community navigator program. Uh, and so right now we are continuing to develop the blogs um, that we've had in the past. Uh, there's some effort to um, do some videos that we will be uh, sharing with all of you, as well as updating our website and we'll be doing some case studies that will live beyond um, the, the program itself. Uh, I think I mentioned our community of practice is robust and has a strong agenda for the, the rest of their time together. Uh, and I think one of the most important things I'm hearing from the community of practice is um, their intention to um, continue the community of practice beyond the community navigator program and have the our micro enterprise program as the umbrella to bring um, the spokes together uh, going forward. Uh, which is really exciting, you know, obviously what the spokes are learning, what we're all learning as individuals and organizations do not stop with the confines of the grant. Um, and so we're really looking at um, how do we make sure we can go forward and continue the good work we've started in the Navigator program. Um, also, the, uh, this whole effort has helped to really inform the CDFA strategic plan, and so both our staff and our board have adopted DEIJ principles um, that we'll be continuing to work on as a staff and a board um, and look at them across our organization. We'll be going through some training this summer, so we're very proud of that institutional organizational change that's happened as part of the Community Navigator Program. And as I mentioned, the micro enterprise program, which is really the foundation for how we set up the hub and spoke effort here in the community navigator program continues to be strengthened uh, by what we've learned and our practices in the community navigator program. Uh, so um, keep looking for that going forward and we'll um, share with you uh, the changes that um, we may see coming so that we can carry on this good work. Um, just a friendly reminder that um, we have a beautiful website that has a lot of this information. Um, I encourage you to check it out and share it within your networks. Um, there's more information, there's um, including about language access, and you can directly connect with the spokes through this website. Um, or please reach out here on this um, call this afternoon to the spokes who are present. Um, really important that we hear from you and um, stay connected to others in the state on this work. Uh, if there are any questions, happy to take those. Also, I know my colleagues at CDFA um, are welcome to take those questions or spokes. Um, I think I'll kick it to you, Melissa. And you can share whether there's anything in, in the chat that we should respond to now. Thanks, Molly. I'm not seeing anything um, in the chat right now, but I know we just gave you a lot of information uh, to digest and to think about. And I think, um, you know, if there's anything that's coming up for you or things that you're working through with your organization or trends or things that you're 